centuries ago. Mankind discovered a way to transfer consciousness into a new body. Making death a mere inconvenience. Since then, we've been providing an unparalleled pedigree of human sleep Please. to only the most discerning client. Psychosec. Live forever in the body you deserve. Yeah, that seems legit to me. Sign me up. Welcome to Court Killers, where we want you to watch what you want, when you want, where you want, and what device you want. We just want you to watch good stuff. I'm Tom Merritt. I'm Brian Brushwood, although I must apologize. I'm not wearing my best body right now. I'm wearing the, you know, oh, the biological one it. I was this born with. This old sleeve? <laughs> my gosh. <laughs> this old thing? Uh, yeah, man. So, uh, Bryce, that's the uh, Altered Carbon. The Is it a Hulu? No, that's a new Netflix, Netflix. series. Netflix. Netflix. We'll be Got talking it. about it later in the show. Ooh, ahoy. Yes, uh, based on the book by Richard K. Morgan, coming in February. More to come later. But first... Disney suing someone Yay, in our primary what a surprise. target. This is a fun little story. Uh, Disney, you know, the tiny little company that owns everything, uh, ha has decided that it doesn't want to give Redbox a deal on DVDs. This, this happened years ago. I think we may have even talked about it on Court Killers. So Redbox has to go buy the DVDs at retail if it wants to put any movie owned by Disney or Pixar, Marvel, et cetera, in its Redbox DVD kiosk. If you're renting Spider-Man, well, Spider-Man's a bad example. If you're renting the Avengers from Redbox, they had to pay full price. They had to pay retail price for that. So Redbox has been saying, well, heck, we get these retail copies of DVDs and Blu-rays and they come with these little uh, digital download coupons. What a waste. Let's sell them. <laughs> so they have started selling the digital download copies unused, right? It's not like they used them and then they're reselling excess. No, they're like, never been used, still valid. We'll sell it to you, give you the code, you download it, digital copies yours. Except that's against the terms of service, like very explicitly against the terms of service. You cannot transfer or sell the codes. Uh, so Disney's suing Redbox, asking for the profits from the sales, as well as an injunction preventing them from continuing this. Redbox told the Wall Street Journal, we feel very confident in our pro-consumer position. Okay, so tell me this, Tom. Uh, yeah. if, if, if I were to sell, let's say I had a Disney library of 20 different DVDs, uh, Blu-rays. Plastic discs. Right, right. Gotcha. And, I, and I wanted to sell them. Yes. Uh, on 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 eBay, I, I want to. I have these discs. There's a yes. market for used discs. I want to sell those used discs. Would would Disney sue me if, along with those discs, I included the codes that came with those discs? Because mm, interesting point. But, uh, I mean, I mean, it's like it's like it's either right or it's wrong, and it's got to well, be that all the way up and down. Here's the thing. You, if you are selling a DVD disc, you are protected under what's called the principle of the right of first sale. If I have an object, I have the right to sell that object uh, to someone else. The download code, if you're, if it's shrink wrapped in there, I think you're safe. You're like, well, I couldn't take it out for goodness sake. I have the right of first sale. Doesn't the fact that that's in there doesn't trump that. Uh, if it's in there and it's open and it's used. I think you could just argue like I'm not selling the download and I haven't used it. So I'm not transferring it. It's just part of the disc. As long as you're not building the sale on that, Disney might not come after you. They might not win in a court. But what Redbox is doing here is specifically saying, oh, no, we keep the disc. <laughs> we just we just take the code out and sell it to somebody. And that is definitely against the terms. So what if they said our policy is you are buying the code and the disc comes with it. Also, if you don't, if you really want the disc, you have to ask for it specifically in this form. Blah 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 blah. But otherwise, we'll assume you really just want the code. I, I think they'd probably get sued. Um, I'd be interested to see if the court would would how the court would handle that. But that's basically doing it so you can get sued. If you don't want to get sued, you do it the other day. Sure, either. sure. Um, 
Man, I got to tell you, so so from an economics perspective, this seems like like they've factored in those uh, digital codes into the price, the retail price. And I think it is important. Like this would be a non-starter of an issue if they were getting special rental DVD bulk discounts or whatever. But instead, Correct. they're paying- Correct, which case they wouldn't be getting the codes. Redbox is, is using this as a bludgeon. They're like, fine, you don't want to give us a deal then freaking sell your car. Well, well, and and I don't know that it's unreasonable for Redbox to say, uh, say if you're gonna make us pay retail prices, we're gonna expect the benefits that come along with retail pricing. Like, well, if- except what Disney would say right away is nobody can do this. There's th- that is not okay, the benefit. Which which this brings digital me digital download is meant as a benefit for the purchaser. It is not meant as a benefit for anyone else but the purchaser. Right. So if you agree to buy this disc, we will then agree to give you a digital copy of it. If you don't buy the disc, you don't get the digital copy. It is a perk on top of that. And digital copies are protected by an entirely different set of laws than physical copies. Which, which, again, let's go back to my example. If I have a copy of Aladdin and you say, oh my gosh, I'd really love the digital code. Do you ever use digital codes? I'm like, no, I never use them. And that would you be say, illegal. You say, I would like I would like to have that digital code. And I was like, give me three bucks. No, and then, even and then, if you do it for free, that's against the terms of service. Terms of service say you can't sell or transfer. You, the person buying the original disc, are the only one who's allowed by the terms to use it. So could a case be made that this is... Uh, like you either buy the rights to a thing or you don't, right? Like, like I, if I, I think as a consumer, I have a reasonable expectation. If I pay twenty five dollars for a Blu ray DVD and along with it a digital code, then that digital code is mine to do with as I please. No, that's the problem with digital property, is you aren't getting the rights to do anything with that digital property. With the disc, you have the right to do something with the physical disc because of the right of first sale. There's no right of first sale of digital property. You don't own that digital download. Disney does. So do you think that there's no case to stand on to to say that? I, uh, I guess let me put it this way. I feel like we've seen cases with less merit than this uh, go whoa, through whoa. in favor. Don't make it personal. Uh, okay. All right. <laughs> I I feel like cases with less merit <laughs> than Tom Merritt uh, have have gone through and changed the rules about what you can and can't do. Not with I, digital. It's usually the opposite with digital. If digital's involved, usually usually rights go away. If there's physical copies uh, around, then it's when it gets mud, muddy. But what Redbox is doing here, I think some of the scenarios, like the very first scenario you mentioned is really interesting, right? It's like, hmm, well, okay, how, how about that? Can you go after that? But that's not what Redbox is doing. They're not giving you the disc at all. Uh, and, and so that is very clearly prevented under the terms of service. And because digital is owned by the company, not owned by you. You're getting a license to use it. They can set the terms of that license, and the terms of the license say only you, the first purchaser, get to use this free copy. So here's the part I don't know. Like, I understand everything where they're coming from. I I don't know that tactically this seems like the strongest, smartest move that Disney can make right now, considering, like, Disney was giving away digital copies alongside their uh, their disc uh, long before the codes were an issue, but it was a physical like a thumb drive with with the yeah, thing yeah. on there, right? So it's like given that that's the precedent, all they did was they pivot and granted, yes, I'm not arguing their rights to to restrict these things. I'm questioning whether or not it's a smart play for this to be the hill that they just choose to die on. And- I don't think they're choosing. I think Disney doesn't look at it as a hill to die on. Disney looks at it as an ant to crush. They're like, no, Redbox, you're not going to get a different deal out of us. You don't get to go out there and sell stuff. And if we let you sell these, then that could be used against us later. Well, why didn't Disney stop Redbox? They knew about it and they let it happen. Uh, so they're like, you're you're trying to rub this in our face and we're going to assert our rights and we're going to stop it. So as the host of Daily Tech News Show, what is your read both on the predictions of where this is going to uh, shake out and also where you feel like ethically they should be? Like, like are, are the two aligned or what do you think? Well, as a host of Daily Tech News Show, uh, <laughs> he just I, took off his actual hat and put on his virtual Daily Tech News Show hat and then started sipping from his tea like he's uh, Kermit the Frog. What's my Daily Tech <laughs> News Show mug? Yeah, um, mug. I, uh, 
I think Redbox is trying to get Disney to come to the table. I think it's a really weird move when you're like, yeah, you're going to sue us? Well, now that we'll drop the suit that you're having against us if you let us buy at wholesale. It's like you're you try it's like they're trying to be such a nuisance that they get Disney to go fine, fine, you can you can have stuff. Maybe they want into movies anywhere or something. I don't know. It just seems like Disney wouldn't pay them any attention, so they kept poking them in the back until they paid attention. And man, Disney doesn't have a sense of humor about this sort of stuff and they don't give in. They're very much like Apple in that respect. I don't think this is going to turn out well for Redbox. This seems like a move Redbox should make if they are on their last leg or on their way out. Like, I wonder if this isn't an indictment of where they are financially, that this seems like a logical Hail Mary to throw. Yeah. it, It does reek a little bit of a desperate move, doesn't it? Yeah, I think so. Well, all right. Uh, shall we go along? Uh, that was a good. That was a good one of those ethical. Can I? Should I? Will I? Because uh, we we've gotten people emailing us about you know, hey, I see these sites selling the uh, the digital codes, and it, you have your answer from our conversation is no. That's that is that is against the terms of service. You know, you're you you go with God, and whether you want to take. Part in that or not? Well, and again, like terms of service are not the same as as a legal threshold. Terms of service opens you up, of course, to a, a civil lawsuit. Like Redbox yeah, but also like you could lose the the you might spend five dollars on a movie that is then taken away from you because the company's like, hey, you, guess what? Uh, we track that down as an illegal transfer of ownership, so it's not yours anymore. Bye. Yeah. Uh, hey, you know what? You'll never lose our gratitude for your patronage. Heck yeah. How many years have we been doing cord killers now, Tom? Well, uh, we started it in that garage in Silicon Valley back in 2013, we, technically. We, that's right. right. We, used to, we used December. to call it the Lisa. Huh? We used to call it the Lisa podcast. Right, right. Uh, and, and then we had overheating issues and it was way too expensive. So we changed it to the, uh, to the podcast 2E. And yeah, that was the one. <laughs> well, that was that was our earlier uh, co-founder who wanted a more open podcast. <laughs> He's like, you just got to keep making uh, the two E. And we're like, no, we're going to make the Macintosh. It's a raincoat podcast. Uh, it, um, it really was. It was around this time four years ago. I can't believe that. Yeah. Uh, well, in I think uh, in a few days is the anniversary of us registering the domain name. And our first beta episode came out the week of Christmas. That's amazing. Uh, yeah. Well, all of this has been made possible by you beautiful people heading on over to patreon.com slash cord killers. A lot of people don't know, but we were one of the very first podcasts to ever do Patreon until I don't want to say until we came along. But by and large, Patreon was focused on the YouTube market. And I know that cord killers was one of the the, the giant cracks that that opened up the dam and sent all the money flooding into the podcast land. We're and- a couple of giant cracks. Uh, yeah, <laughs> indeed we are. We're total crack ups. Uh, but we can't thank you guys enough. If you head on over to cord killer, uh, uh, patreon.com slash cord killers, you could keep us loud, live, and very much independent. People don't remember that there was a time that the total budget for this show was $100 per episode. And thanks to you guys, we've moved well beyond those days. Thank you guys so very, very much. All right. Because you are supporting us, we're going to tell you. How to watch things. Uh, lightning round. Lightning round. A bunch of b- d- bunch of different hardware-related announcements on how to watch this week. Apple released tvOS 11.2, which lets you uh, have the device automatically switch the video display mode to match the native frame rate of a video. This is especially important for different encoding of HDR, 4K stuff. Uh, it also adds a sports section to the TV app with ESPN integration. So you can pick all your favorite teams and then it will tell you in that top line on the main page uh, if one of your teams is playing. Am I mixing up our stories or did we report on this as a rumored incoming feature? A bit a of beta we were, I think yeah. this is our third. There was the rumored incoming. Yep. Then there was the it's in the beta, so it's real. Got and it. now it's finally released. All right. <laughs> I, I thought this sounded awfully familiar. <laughs> yeah, we went through the many stages of this this one for sure. Stage one, grief. <laughs> Stage two, <laughs> anger. <laughs> Fire TV owners can now use voice to watch, play, pause, rewind, fast forward, and more. You just you just talk into your remote. 
uh, and you get all these expanded features. It can also take you to an individual show, an individual network, a specific genre of programming. Uh, apps have to add support for it to work with them. Uh, so previously, it only worked with Amazon stuff. Now it can work with Hulu, NBC, Bravo, Showtime, Sony, PlayStation View, and CBS All Access, among others. Man, I would love to play with this. I would love to try it all out. I mean, I guess I do have a Fire TV stick and the other thing, but it's like they're not set up. So the barrier to entry is is equals I'm a busy old man. All 2017 Samsung Smart TVs now get the redesigned Hulu design. That includes Hulu's live TV service and very f much fewer colors. Have, have very... either of you guys spent much time in this land? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. No, it's my default interface now. Oh, wow. I don't, I don't like the new Hulu layout. There's less stuff on screen. It looks really nice, but I think there's less stuff on screen, and it makes browsing kind of difficult because you only see one thing full screen, and then sometimes you'll see a couple of things below it, but it's like, I want, I, I, I'd like, I, I don't know, I liked having icons in a row. Uh. Yeah, I I agree. I, I, I always looked at Hulu to see what to watch next from Hulu, like Bob's Burgers or or um, uh, The La uh, Last Man on Earth. Now I look at the Apple TV, the TV, TV app line for yeah. that stuff because it's more easily recognizable than the big words that are on screen with Hulu. Right. Philips TV with Roku built in is now available. 40 inch version costs 349 bucks. Wow. Includes Roku OS 8, which integrates over the air signals into a smart guide. So I got a question for you guys, and uh, I could say this on the show because my wife does not watch the show, nor do my kids. <laughs> oh boy. Here uh, we go. For Christmas, I'm definitely planning to finally replace the living room TV area. So it's like, you remember we swapped out the giant monitor from downstairs. I stole the TV from the kids uh, that that now shows our program right here. And then uh, uh, I, I I was my default action was to just replace it with this TCL that is our uh, uh, call in monitor. But uh, do you think I should go for this instead? I mean, uh, you were going to buy another TCL. Yeah, um, I mean, I, just just because I knew that would be easy and this is good enough and and it'll. It'll be appropriate in the living I kind of feel like, yeah. I mean, I would read up some reviews just to make sure there's nothing quirky about this Phillips because I, I haven't seen, like, what are the actual CNET guys saying about this? I always turn to them. Uh, but Phillips generally makes a little higher quality television. Uh, and for 349 bucks. You know, and you're getting that Roku OS. That's the thing you love about the TCL. It might yeah. be worth it. Uh, is and, the TCL 4K? Uh, this one, no, no, no. This is just oh. 1080p. And to be honest, I don't know that I want a 4K or whatever. Yeah. To be honest, the main reason that I'm finally replacing, because what's the, down there right now is yeah. a monitor without a stand that's a 1080p monitor that I bought over 10 years ago. And and it's like I haven't cared. It's, it's all burned in. I'm like, whatever. But... I happen to know that uh, I'm pretty sure Santa's bringing a Switch, and I want the kids to have a decent monitor to play on the big screen on. Mm. So we'll see. All right. Well, uh, I'll, I'll get back to Santa then. <laughs> <laughs> Wink! Instead yeah. of you. All right, let's talk about what to watch in Under Surveillance. Uh, it's all about location, location, location. Under Surveillance. First trailer for Avengers Infinity War came out last week. Every character that's been in a Marvel movie is in it, uh, except for Fantastic Four, of course. Uh, Infinity War opens May 4th, 2018. What'd you think? I think, much to your surprise, Tom, I've not yet watched it and have no intentions to watch it. Oh, you're doing that now. I, I, I'm not. This is a problem. Okay, Patrick Beja is doing this too. Jeff Kanata has infected podcasters with a fear of spoilers, okay, making it difficult to talk about trailers in this world, and it has to stop. We need to make trailers viewable again, Brian. <laughs> Here's the thing is, is, is I agree. Jeff Kanata has crossed a line where all of a sudden it's like, <laughs> Wait, it's not Jeff's fault. <laughs> yes, no, it is Jeff's fault. Because it's not Jeff's fault. He's walking around Amish as hell with his giant beard and just saying like, uh, not <laughs> only am I not evil. using technology, nobody used technology around me. What's that? Is that a lawnmower hum? <laughs> ah, la, 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 la. And, and, and that is inappropriate. And I'm talking to you. I'll say it right to your face, Jeff Kanata. Uh, but mine is more a, uh, I'm not going to go out of my way. Like, I, I'll tell you what the difference was. The difference was Thor Ragnarok was, I, I just... I will never know what it's like to see that movie without knowing 
the big reveal at the end of the first act because it was in every single uh, uh, thing. So it's like, I'm not saying I need to wrap all my own presence and hide and wipe my memories of whatever happened. What I'm saying is if there's even the slightest chance that I could preserve some surprise by mm. if it's a movie I'm already decided I'm going to go see, yeah. let's just, you know, if it shows up, fine. I will say, That's fine. I if, will say see, there's a thing in this trailer that I think in that vein – if you don't know about it, I think it'll be hard to hide until the movie comes out. But the way that this trailer ends would be a cool thing you might not expect. Yeah. Oh, I totally expected that thing. Are you kidding me? Really? People were getting all excited about that part of the trailer. I, know, and I was I, like, well, you know what? Okay, I did, that's cool. I did see this. But this is at the end where uh, Thanos keeps talking about his champion, and it turns out to be uh, the thing. No, 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 no. Okay. I mean, we really shouldn't confirm or deny, <laughs> honestly. You're right. It could yeah. be that, Brian. It yeah, could. maybe. Maybe that's what it is. There's maybe. 20 wrong. minutes of Thor Ragnarok in the middle of Infinity War Part 1. <laughs> he kicks in the door. He's like, it's clobbering time. I guess I'm a champion now. Let's no, go back to you and see spoiler in this time. Movie. Uh, okay, fine. Watch Don't watch your trailer. I... <sighs> I have a hard time explaining my position on this because I don't want it to sound like I want to spoil everything for everyone. Everyone should be spoiled because that's not what I think either. But I personally enjoy finding as much out as possible before the movie and then watching it unfold. That That is a cool thing for me. That's just me. So what were your what did you think? Of the trailer, Tom. I I, did I thought the trailer it. was was exciting, and it makes me excited to see the movie, and probably a tiny bit more excited than I was before I saw it. Oh, that's good because you were previously talking about how there was no chance you were going to go see this movie, but luckily this trailer convinced you oh, at no. the last minute. Oh no, I mean minute. that's that's unfair, Brian. <laughs> Sorry, no, I'm I'm taking cheap shots right now. I'm taking uh, the. No, yeah, I will but, say, but I, I will I say, was, you know, yeah. there is that Age of Ultron in the back of my head, right? And this kind of washed that Age of Ultron right out of my hair. See, like I, <laughs> I, I am that's, not. That's that's the tagline. <laughs> Avengers movie. Wash that Ultron right out of your hair. Tom Merritt of DTN. <laughs> uh, I don't like the superhero stuff so much lately, and I'll say that this didn't scratch an itch for me yet. Okay. I think I think it's cool. I think that there are a lot of people in this trailer, uh, but I don't. I think it. I it it's doing the weird thing where I don't know if it's gonna make the bad guy interesting or not. I don't so know. I'm going to bring this up because it's a newish story that didn't make it into the dock. But along these lines, did you see the, uh, I guess, quote unquote announcement that uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp is going to be the first Marvel romantic comedy? Oh, cool. That's amazing. I, I think it's a, I think it's such a brilliant idea. I love the idea of them exploring, you know, it's like we, we, we got political intrigue with uh, 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 Winter Captain Soldier. America. Yeah, we, we got uh, we got a heist movie with the first Ant-Man. We got, you know, uh, a, a, a insane space opera with Guardians of the Galaxy. I mean, it makes sense. That's yeah. what it should be. That yeah. absolutely is what it should be. Agreed. Uh, George R. R. Martin confirmed sci-fi will adapt his novella Night Flyers into a 10-episode series with a debut targeted for July. And when I say uh, sci-fi will adapt, not George R. R. Martin, this is a novella. George R. R. Martin was like, I don't know how you're going to make a 10-episode series. And then they showed him the pilot and told him where they were going with it. He's like, huh, that sounds pretty cool. I can't wait to see it. I uh, I, I got to admit, it's been a while since we've heard about his other project, the the one he edited called uh, uh, Wild Cards, uh, that had it felt an oh, right. awful yeah. lot like uh, uh, The Watchmen, only it was a series of, of individual short stories. I, I I don't know Night Flyers, but but I I'm just going to assume it's probably just as good as Wild Cards, and and I'm gonna my enthusiasm for Wild Cards I can now duplicate to enthusiasm for Night Flyers. Uh, Netflix tweeted on its Altered Carbon Twitter account an ad for sleeving, which you heard at the beginning of the show, and uh, then Monday morning released a full-on trailer, which is actually, I think, what you heard at the beginning of the show. The sleeving ad was part of the trailer, too, so it's all confusing. Altered Carbon, coming to Netflix February 2nd. This I really cool. think that in our lifetime, in, in the next 20 years, there will be kind of a virtual version of sleeving that will be available. I think that that um, uh, 
I think that VR goggles will get small enough and easy enough to wear and multiple bodies can be tracked at, di at, at different times and lighthouses and all that to where you can uh, maybe not go out on a date with your wife, but but spend uh, an evening with your with your wife and just both of you see each other as 23 year old super hot versions of each other like like virtual sleeving i think is going to be a real ass thing and oh, uh, that's interesting and that avoids a lot of the repercussions because in altered carbon it's not virtual it's correct. real bodies and whose bodies were they and why is only the rich people that can get them uh and if if you want to be uh totally spoiler free shut your ears but the premise of altered carbon the book is that a murder has happened and the stack destroyed, meaning that the person who was murdered can only remember up until his last backup. And so that's why they bring in an investigator to try to figure out, okay, what what actually happened between his last backup and the time he was murdered. Uh, this is something that uh, uh, in the Peter F. Hamilton books, um, they, uh, they, they call, <laughs> with the convenient euphemism, uh, body loss. They don't call it death. They're like, oh, she suffered body loss. And it's yeah. like, takes years of therapy to it's, get it's over. It's a science fiction version of Windows Restore Point or iCloud backups. Like, oh man, it, it broke my phone and my last iCloud backup was yesterday and now I can't remember how I broke my phone. Uh, Knots in the chat says uh, the Bruce Willis movie, uh, uh, that was uh, Surrogates, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, Surrogates. Uh, Netflix announced it as renewed Stranger Things for a third season. Shocker. Yeah. It hadn't officially man, announced it yet, so that's, now it's announced. That's doubly weird because there was no foreshadowing that that would be the case at all. In it's the strangest two. thing about it. Strangest. Uh, YouTube star Miranda Sings will not get a third season of her Netflix series Haters Back Off. Uh, none of us saw it, did we? Well, no, we're not the already audience either. Um, it is weird when Netflix cancels things because... They, you know, you feel like, oh, well, they don't need a big audience, so why do they cancel things? We kind of went through that with Sense8. But it's now becoming a normal part of the life cycle of Netflix to occasionally cancel stuff. Can, can I – and keep in mind, this comes from there, – there's no way to divorce my experience from what I'm about to say. But I, I think it's weird to still use the phrase cancels because cancels mm -hmm. imply – there was yeah. a time in the 80s and 90s that it's like, this is a new series that will run forever. And then they're like – no, we're not running it anymore. It is now canceled. Canceled. Whereas that's not the case. It's like it's like uh, choosing not to renew is not the same as choosing to cancel. And I yeah. don't think that cancel quite rings true in this environment now because they can choose to not renew it, and then three years from now, a movie comes out uh, in the same sure. universe uh, with the same story. Well, and it's not like Miranda Sings doesn't still have her YouTube channel where she's making content all the time. So Miranda Sings isn't canceled. Uh, just this little aspect of her universe is no longer going to be developed and made. Uh, it's 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 a it's a language matter, right? Netflix can cancels Miranda Sings three, well, four words, right? Yeah. Uh, Netflix chooses not to continue to make Miranda Sings. It's just, it's wordy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Netflix has yet to ask for another season of Miranda Sings. Uh, yeah. A different thing, right? Right. Uh, Netflix has picked up The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, a series about Sabrina the Teenage Witch that the CW was developing as a companion show for Riverdale, but they're not going to bring it to CW. Same creators that have been developing it, they're just going to bring it to Netflix instead. Was Sabrina the Teenage Witch part of the Riverdale universe? Was she part of the Archie comics Yeah, land? she was an Archie spinoff, I believe. Okay, got it. Okay. Then that does make sense. Like Josie and the Pussycats. Yeah. Got oh, it. that's right. They, they were all in that world. Yeah. yeah. Uh, another trailer for Black Mirror is out, teasing the season's finale episode, Black Museum, starring Letitia Wright. Still don't have a release date, though. Man, uh, this is another one where it's like, I mean, I'm I'm happy to be looking at these fantastic clips that we're seeing from the ad, but also all in. I'm going to watch every single Black Mirror thing ever, forever. Yeah. Uh, and then also, uh, Bryce wanted us to mention real quick that a trailer for Metalhead about a woman being chased by a relentless robot dog is this, out. This is another Black Mirror trailer. They've done trailers for, I think, this all of the upcoming batch of episodes. So this one dropped today. So um, there's individual 
specific episode trailers for the upcoming Black Mirror season. This one doesn't have a release date attached to it either, does it? No, it doesn't, which is Damn super it. unfortunate. I would love to see the number of trailers relative to before and after all of the Kevin Spacey stuff went down. I want to know if if they're just louder and more fast, like, look at this other thing we got. So much stuff. House of what? Well, I mean, I don't know. I don't know that that I th- I think this just feels like what Netflix has been doing is like, hey, we're heading into the break. Uh, people are going to be having some time to sit around. Let's give them lots of reasons to subscribe to Netflix and watch stuff. Yeah. Speaking of which, that's what we've been doing. Uh, I uh, finally got around to watching the first episode of Atlanta, which has been highly recommended. It's been on my list to watch for a long time. And well, Eileen and I turned to each other after the first scene and we're like, this isn't funny, uh, but it gets funny. And that's what everybody kept telling me. It's like, you're not going to think it's funny at first because it's a lot more serious than you think, but then it gets pretty funny and just hang in there. So I, I uh, hope I can find time to, to keep watching it, but it's really good. I don't know that I would sell it as a comedy so much as, uh, and, and not even, and you're going to be tempted- sense. From the first episode, you're going to be tempted to believe it's a narrative, like a dramedy, like an Orange is the New Black or whatever. But but you're going to notice this jarring disconnect from one episode to the next because it's like a rock skipping over the the lake of, of, of Ernie's life, you know? And I, I think... Um, uh, I don't know. I think, I think that... Uh, I, I'll be really curious to hear where it's headed. I will say... That later this season, one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my entire life, uh, there's a a certain car that shows up in the middle of chaos, and it may be one of the funniest moments I've seen on television in the last five years. I also watched the movie Contact uh, in preparation for a podcast I'm doing with Nate Langson's text message about the book Contact, but I wanted to watch the movie too just to kind of have that in my head. And man. Holds up. Yeah. The story holds up great, and I want to say it's dated, except it's dated for the right reason because the story is placed in 1997, and they've got Bill Clinton as president talking about contact with aliens, kind of, with some clever editing. And it's like, wow, I really feel like I'm watching a 1997 documentary, like of things that actually happened back then. I remember Uh, I was in college at the time. I think it was a senior in college when that movie came out. And I remember feeling like it was an obvious gimmick that kind of took me out of the movie, that they were clearly taking bits of a speech about the human genome and then using the right parts to make it sound like it was about extraterrestrial contact and so on. But watching it again, like two years ago, I was like, no, like once you're divorced from the immediacy of those events, totally fits, totally is believable, totally. And, and their, their footage blended seamlessly with the, with the found footage that they did. I thought it was great. I, and I remember at the time just being sort of mildly impressed, like, oh, look, they got all these real news anchors to, from CNN to do all this stuff. And it was one of the first movies to do that. Now it was like a trip back in time. Like, oh, right. I remember her. Oh, I haven't seen him since he retired. From, you know, like, again, it was it was really interesting and really fun to watch. I've forgotten how much it diverges from the book um, in man. some ways. But the, how about yeah. how about Gary Busey's son, man? Uh, he He plays a great crazy man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, also watched Crisis on Earth X, which was the crossover event between Supergirl, Flash, Arrow, and Legends of Tomorrow. Uh, way better than the previous crossover event because they did what comic books do, and they said, we're going to tell a single story across all four series, uh, and and then and then we'll go back to your regularly scheduled lives. Uh, and it worked. It, it was really cool superhero fun. Do you think? I, I know we've talked about this before. Uh oh, what? No, I, I I was thinking that was my thinking. Oh, okay, you were adopting your thinking face. Yeah. Um, I'm not qualified as I have only watched like the first season of Flash, but there was I don't want to say an embracing of cheese, but there was a relaxation about this need to make anything look or feel believable, and everything was self-contained. I mean, is that the real secret sauce that has made DC so successful in the television space? I I think so. That gave them some freedom to be like, it's world in a bottle, folks. We're not making any apologies about it. And if it bothers you, then we're not going to do anything about it. But if you can get past it, you're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, Flash and Supergirl are the best examples 
of that. And and they put some of that aside. Well, I wouldn't say they put it aside. I'd say they made the bottle bigger for this crossover event. So there was less of the cheesy aspect of it. Um, but there was just enough. And it, it was fun to see these characters cross over. I don't even really watch Legends anymore. I'm not caught up on Arrow, but I was caught up on Flash and Supergirl. And it was it was worth it just for that. Right on. So what have you been watching? Questions. Yes. Did you happen to see Coco since we spoke last week? No, I still haven't. <sighs> okay. Uh, I, I've been watching Future Man through episode, I think I'm on episode seven of the series right now. Uh, it still continues to be very, very funny. It's far enough along in the series at this point for me that they're starting to do uh, show in a bottle episodes, you know, Monster mm -hmm. of the Weeks. Um, I just did. I, have you watched all of them, Bryce? No, I only watched the pilot. Uh, okay. Well, I don't think I'm going to take anything away by saying they do a lot of time travel in Future Man, and we're at the point now where they need to get some MacGuffin juice, and so they go to the future where they rob the home of James Cameron, <laughs> but you never encounter James Cameron. You only encounter conversations with James Cameron's artificially intelligent smart home that they have to convince to let them have the MacGuffin, and uh, it's it's a lot of fun. It's a great... It's, Really enjoying Future Man, and and despite its low budget, despite the special effects being, you know, uh, uh, sub YouTube quality, <laughs> I'm still I'm still totally enjoying it. Of course, we're both watching Mr. Robot. We'll talk about that in spoiler in time and uh, Deadwood as well. We're on, on to episode two of Deadwood, our new anthology watch, uh, our library watch, whatever you want to call it. Bryce, what have you been on the lookout for? Hey, we got a uh, pick from David. We kind of sat on this for a little while, but I'll explain why. Uh, he writes, uh, the show, uh, hi everybody, the show I was able to only watch the first three episodes on my cable DVR uh, was from this past February called The History of Comedy. Uh, the With the whole Kathy Griffin controversy, again, we got this in June, uh, I felt the show was more relevant today than ever before. I honestly thought the documentary series was as good as, a 30, as the 30 for 30 OJ made in America. Unfortunately, CNN, for whatever reason, has never aired the whole season and isn't selling the season on Amazon, iTunes, Google Play, or even Vudu. Uh, this is from David Pick in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. Yeah, thank you, David. This seems really cool. Uh, it, it And, you know, for the longest time, I it was really tough for me to put it in the segment because there was no, no way to watch it. You couldn't watch it on CNN.com. You can buy it. Uh, but now season one is on Hulu. Uh, that's uh, eight, eight episodes on, on Hulu. And it seems it seems really cool. It seems like a, a well-made documentary. Uh, and it also sounds like there is a second season somewhere. I don't I don't know. It, it, the IMDB says that there's a second season, but CNN.com well, doesn't really list it, but fair, it does say it's airing. Fair, fair enough. Like like the second season is roundly criticized for being wildly unbelievable. There's this reality television star that becomes president of the United States, and then there's like the Russians are involved for some reason. This is the problem with CNN and script writers. Yeah, yeah. They just uh, they just yeah. don't have believable storylines anymore. <laughs> but uh, it's called the History of Comedy. It's on uh, streaming on Hulu, and I think it looked like it's on Sky if you're in England. So maybe check that out. All right. If you got something we should be on the lookout for, uh, remember Bryce. Bryce holds on to this stuff. He pays attention. Email us, cordkillers at gmail.com. And now Brian will divulge secrets of his life. <laughs> yes. Welcome to a segment we like to call <laughs> Secrets of Brian's Life. Hey, uh, for those of you guys who don't know, uh, both Tom and I keep our, our families afloat at this sea of poverty uh, by by selling stuff. <laughs> Tom writes original novels, and I sell stuff at scamstuff.com, where you still have, I believe, maybe, maybe two weeks to get something in time for Christmas. Uh, think about your loved ones and think about something clever you'd like to give them that they're going to be like, wow, I've never heard of such a thing. Maybe it's a hat with a secret bone-breaking self-defense mechanism stitched into the back. Maybe it's a magic uh, wallet that allows you to perform incredible tricks. Trick deck of cards, uh, bum keys to let you get inside any any uh, door, or the utility key, my favorite. It's a six-in-one multipurpose tool that looks like a key right there on your keychain. All of that available at scamstuff.com. Tom, where did you go? Oh, sorry. I was just pulling out all the novels that I've written. I see. I told you. I, yeah, uh, at Scam Stuff, we need to make all those into safes. Oh, 
They're kind of thin. Well, I mean, you glue them all together and make them into yeah, one yeah. big safe. Yeah, yeah. Come on, man. Yeah, I've got, got extras. <laughs> so you'd be destroying many small books for one safe? I mean, yes, but the good news is they the the the, the cutout words travel through time to yeah. the past. <laughs> totally. All right, uh, let's get into the front lines. Front lines. The Diffusion Group estimates that the legacy pay TV market, which is what they're calling cable and satellite, will drop to 60% of the U.S. market by 2030 from its current 81%. If you add in internet services, those are non-legacy, PS View, Sling TV, they estimate that the total 2030 market will still only be 79% as online services were, will grow, but not enough to make up the decline. They, they think online services will go from the current 4% to 14%. This is a watershed moment, Tom, calling them legacy. Hey, could you imagine when we started this show six, seven years ago, calling them legacy services as they were no. the dominant way to get all your entertainment? I, I We've gone from it's a temporary decline, cord cutting will never catch on, to it's a minor thing that only a few people will want to do, to... It's a trend that won't make up the difference for the eventual <laughs> decline of legacy. Like, it's huge. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, totally. Netflix's uh, chief content officer, Ted Sarandos, confirmed that production on the final season of House of Cards will begin next year, and it will be a good creative conclusion. Variety says the last season will be eight episodes and focus on Robin Wright's character, Claire Underwood. I don't know. This sounds to me like this is... Tuck those t that tail between your legs. Just exit with dignity. They're like, let's wrap it up. Let's wrap it up. Uh, Robin they were already going to wrap it do. up. Uh, they, they certainly do have to tuck their tail between their legs and exit with dignity. You're definitely not wrong about that. On the other hand, did you watch the last season? No, I didn't. I didn't. The way it ends sets itself up for this to be perfectly natural if you didn't know any of these other reasons for it. Wow. Yeah, there is, there is, it ends on just the right weird moment that yep. it could make sense that we don't see Kevin Spacey's character anymore. Interesting. It's yeah. kind of a weird, it, it's a weird sort of foresight almost on the writing of that season. But So in other words, they, they wrote an insurance policy and it paid off big time. Maybe. I wonder. I, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, I remember watching that last episode and going, Why it would be cooler that? if what they're trying to make me think is going to happen happened, but I know it's not because mm -hmm. Frank Underwood's going to come back. Only. <laughs> I mean, the only thing about this is I know Frank Underwood is not coming back now. Like that. That's for sure. That's that's guaranteed. Spoiler, Spoiler alert. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, golly. Oh, golly. <laughs> All right. CBS CEO Leslie Moonves said the company is thinking about launching a 24 hour entertainment news service based on entertainment tonight. Uh, CBS already has CBS N which is a free 24-hour news app. Of course, CBS All Access, which you have to pay for, and the forthcoming CBS Sports streaming service. Still trying to figure out how I feel about CBS's plays. I think I respect them for going against the grain and being very future-focused and doing very unpopular things in the moment. Uh, but it's still uh, with only, what, six episodes of Star Trek in I mean, in the, the only thing that's unpopular is making people watch Star Trek on CBS All Access. And frankly, it's turned out that people will pay to watch Star Trek on CBS All well, Access. It, it, so keep, keep in mind, when I say unpopular, I don't necessarily mean like people are in an uproar about it. I mean, it's not very popular. How many people yeah. do you know have been uh, tuning into the 24-hour oh, CBS the, the, News Oh, the numbers network? have been great. They they actually lifted up CBS's bottom line. We talked about that on the show. Okay. Like, all right, all right, yeah. All right. So I, I, I think they're pleased with it right now. Uh, and CBSN, I mean, I never watch it, but it's right there for people who are waiting to cut the cord and like, but I would like a news service. Oh, wait, I can get CBS for free. Great. Uh, I, so an entertainment service like that might be a good play, too. Amazon has released its Silk web browser for the first and second generation Fire TVs, the second generation Fire TV stick. But notably, it doesn't work on third generation Fire TV devices that use a newer version for Fire OS. So I'm confused, Amazon. Are you going to come out with a new version of Silk web browser that works on the newer look, devices? Man, then, look, or? I'm sorry. You Look, uh, iOS is a beautiful girl. Why don't you two go out? I don't understand. You guys got to get married. Just let, let me let me just have one device. Let me just have an I the Apple TV. Wait, Fire OS. 
right? Yeah. No, no, no. I'm saying iOS. I'm saying I'm saying I, I just thought you really like. There's no the browser. Stuff, there's no browser on Apple TV. I know, that's what I'm saying. I just want one box. I just want one box. Ah, you're a one box kind of guy. I see what you're saying. I'm you faithful. don't want to play the field. I'm faithful. All right. <laughs> AT&T told a federal judge Tuesday that it would strike deals with cable companies to ensure that channels from TBS and CNN do not go dark if AT&T is allowed to buy Time Warner. It would submit any disputes over fees for arbitration for seven years after the deal closes. U.S. Department of Justice suing to block the merger. This is a big deal for AT&T to say, for seven years, we will give up that bargaining stick that everyone uses uh, to fight for fee carriage. Do you think that decisions like this will make sense 50 years from now? <laughs> like, like I feel like the very nation, the very notion of a, of a network and a carrier and, 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 and not being able to X, Y, Z exclusivity license and so on is going to seem very alien 50 years from now. Well, this is how it happens though. Right. And that's why at and is fighting so hard. Maybe, maybe it's the foresight to say like, you know what? Seven years, carriage fees are not going to be that big of a deal anyway. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Now you could be right. Let's get to some dispatches from the front. Dispatches from the side. <laughs> dispatches from the underbelly and the inside. <laughs> Andrew Bradley says, Tom and Brian, have either of you used an NVIDIA Shield TV? You talk about the Roku and Apple TV a lot, but I never hear you talk about the Shield. For me and my specific requirements, it's the best set-top box I've tried. If you live in a country where it's legal to make DVD Blu-ray backups, the Shield is one of the few set-top boxes that has enough power to play back the files. Cody plus Shield is great. So I don't think we've talked specifically about the Shield very much, but I think in the past we've talked about the idea of a uh, just a PC in the living room being the best solution, the best of all worlds. Well, we talked about the Shield TV a bunch. Uh, we just don't talk about it as much as Roku and Apple TV because Roku and Apple TV are the more popular devices, right? Uh, so more people in our audience are using Roku and Apple TV. Uh, that's just the way it's going to be. The reason for that is the Shield TV is a little bit less user-friendly for a lot of folks. That doesn't mean it's not user-friendly. It's great. Works wonderfully. Uh, if you want to deal with Cody uh, to run it, then great. It's it's perfect. Like, like Andrew wrote, it is perfect for his specific requirements, and it is a really good set-top box. Just a little fiddly. If you don't mind little, having to do a little fiddly, uh, to Shield TV is a great choice. He's right. He's not wrong. A. Scott Davis writes, Hi, Tom and Brian. Just came home from an AMC theater here in Florida. They have changed their terms of service for Stubbs members. You no longer get to accumulate points if you use MoviePass. I asked for a manager for clarification. I was given a hard copy of a notice to all theaters dated October 30th, 2017. Guests using MoviePass will no longer be able to accrue points unless they use cash or another credit card. I guess that's one way to stop aggressive point accumulation a. Scott Davis. Well, there you go. Yeah. Uh, Bryce uh, had a note on that there. Well, th so Regal, we, we've been talking a lot about uh, the, the the writer whose name I've forgotten now. Who is Joshua. Joshua. The Joshua Chronicles. Come on, man. It's a whole <laughs> month-long arc we had. It was a saga. <laughs> uh, who goes to Regal in the way that Regal probably couldn't really enforce this without going through a lot of headache is that, all the receipts at Regal have a transaction ID. And so if you don't have your card with you, you can use their app to put it in later. So I wonder if you use AMC, maybe see if they have something like that with an app. Uh, otherwise, you might. Or they may not give you that transaction. That transaction ID may be flagged as having been used with a Movies Anywhere credit card. Well, I mean, I'd regardless, I think we're all in agreement that, that this opportunity, this hack is on its way out. But uh, uh, real quick to chime in, a uh, man, oh man, uh, do some righteous folks write in on this issue saying it's a moral, a morally bankrupt move to engage in this level of, of extreme couponing and even to try to get away with it. Like, like yes, terms of service, whatever. Sure. But, uh, you know, th there is one school of thought that says, hey, man, you know, if they don't catch you, then that's on them, not on you, you know. And but again, the economics are still just the same as if someone paid cash money to go see a movie and as, as far as they're concerned because they're being paid by movie pass right, right. yeah right. however uh some people do not see it that way and they feel like this is a default on the prisoner's dilemma that is going to see the movies weird belissa wrote in and said these questions are mostly for tom 
How do you watch the crossover episodes if you buy and binge Supergirl and Flash? Crisis on Earth X was really good and also had important story arc points for many of the characters. I hope you get to watch all four hours of it. Uh, yes, the way I did it was I watched the Legends of Tomorrow and Arrow episodes of the crossover off my TiVo. Uh, which records everything with commercials. So I had to press the little green button, whereas I watched The Flash and Supergirl with the binged bought seasons where I didn't have to press the green button. Uh, but if you didn't have the TiVo and you wanted to do the same thing, just go buy that those individual episodes from Arrow uh, and Legends of Tomorrow in the same store where you get Flash and Supergirl, and you're just paying the single episode fee then, and you could watch them. Uh, she also said, I'm very hesitant about this Movies Anywhere service. I agree it sounds great, though I have a similar service. I asked my son if we own a movie and where, and he always knows. <laughs> That's pretty good. He <laughs> says, my concern is that I can't see any information on who's behind this. Do I really want to trust them with logins for several services that are connected to my payment methods? I think I have four different credit cards connected to my Amazon account. Even if Movies Anywhere is not untrustworthy, how do I know they are careful with security? What if they get hacked? I'm interested to know what you think. Tom, Tom, breaking news, breaking news. We have uh, some information on Movies Anywhere. Joining us live on the scene, Tom Merritt, live from Los Angeles, California. What do you got, Tom? Thank you, Brian. Uh, live, uh, Tom Merritt from DTNS reporting. And uh, I can report now that Movies Anywhere is owned by a small company called Disney. <laughs> so, <laughs> Disney. I mean, I don't know. Maybe you don't trust Disney, uh, but... They're backed by Disney. So, Disney, you say? Well, who knows? Yeah. Maybe it'll turn into something someday. Yeah. Uh, but that doesn't, I mean, even then, she asked a very good question, which is like, wait a minute, if I'm logging into Voodoo, I'm logging into Apple, how do I know this is legit? Pay attention when you do those logins. If you're on a browser, you can look at the URL and see, is it HTTPS? And am I actually at the website of the service itself? You should be at the service. That's how you know you're not getting fished to get your password and user ID stolen. And I'll tell you what, man, uh, we've alluded to this on the show before, but I really do think that the new Monopoly game it used to be that uh, gobbling up different uh, aspects of the spectrum was the big game to grab. But now I feel like you want to get users into different ecosystems as fast oh, as yeah. possible. I mean, it's like I, I've already made clear, like, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm an Amazon guy. I'm, I'm trapped. I'm, it's very unlikely I'm going to crawl out of that, that space because I bought enough stuff on there that all things being equal, I'm going to buy more in the Amazon ecosystem. And yet, you won't plug in your Fire TV stick. <sighs> I can't be bothered. It's, it's all the way in the mm. bucket. Uh, um, uh, okay, we have secret information uh, oh. from somebody who says, Hey, Asi... Asesinos de cuerdas. There you go, that one. Uh, the mythical DVR in DirecTV now exists. <laughs> I just need you to walk around with me, and every time I need to access that phrase, I need you to say it, Tom. <laughs> the, myth <laughs> the mythical DVR in DirecTV Now exists. I'm one of the lucky few that got to beta test the DirecTV Now Apple TV and iOS apps. Few inter interface changes like show info and color logos for the networks. Interface just seems to flow better. Attached are a few picks. We got some secret picks. Secret better hope those picks. aren't encoded. Anyway, uh, these picks come from nosotros. Somos <laughs> los nosotros. asesinos de cuerdas. <laughs> Mis toca discos es disco puesto. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then finally, Kimberly, the Texas teacher, hashtag Houston Strong, says, I just want to second Brian's suggestion of firing all the service and adding things back as you want them. I did this when you all suggested it this past spring. It worked great for me. I canceled everything except Netflix and Amazon Prime because I use their shipping. At the end of August, I added Hulu Live earlier than I planned as a backup for my antenna to get to the Houston stations in as many ways as possible due to Hurricane Harvey. I never lost power or connectivity, but my antenna didn't work very well in all that rain. All my family members were lucky to be high and dry. Glad to hear that. Uh, one household had to evacuate because they were below a dam, but they didn't flood. I've been happy with Hulu Plus. Each month, I add either a channel from Amazon or BritBox to binge on a series that isn't included in Hulu. And there you go. Right Done. on. Well, thank you, Kimberly, and thank you, everybody, for joining us. Our website is cordkillers.com. Our email address is cordkillers at gmail.com. And we're live on diamondclub.tv Mondays at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, because you wanted us to do it, and we still do. Hey, guys. 
Tom and Brian here. We just wanted to say thank you to all of our $5 patrons who keep us loud, live, and independent. You guys make Court Killers the production that it is. Your name appears in the video credits and appears in our hearts. And if you'd like to become one of them or see who they are, you can go to patreon.com slash court killers. You'll need to do more than just go there, though. You'll have to sign up and, you know, pledge an amount. But Unless you just want to see who they are. Well, I mean, you can gawk. That's a little creepy, isn't it? If you want to be a gawker, let's go. Up to you. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>